Okay, everybody, hello. Welcome to the third and final game in the series between Stark and HWA. I'm Llama Down Under. I'm going to be joined by PQMZ. Io for HWA this time. Makes a lot of sense. After what happened last game, they don't want to give it away. And I'm pretty sure they can play it. I mean... However, this game start go with Oracle over the Wish Doctor, which... Offers a lot more damage in terms of like single target on the IO, but slightly more defensive. Much better against Tiny in terms of stopping him killing people, whether it's by disarming him or stopping the damage from the combo. I think it's really interesting because in both games, I'm trying to remember all of the picks, but Oracle has been kind of ignored. Uh, it did get banned out in when the Death Prophet was picked up. But nobody had been reaching for it, certainly not this early in the draft, and suddenly Stark go with Oracle Faceless, not Inv Invoker Faceless, even though I know Stark plays Invoker quite a bit. So, interesting Same setup. reason as last game, though. They don't want to overplay their laning stage and get set into a way that later fucks them. They want to keep their draft as open-ended as possible, and Oracle's going to be useful regardless. Same reason last game HWA won't work Doctor because they perceived it would be useful, useful regardless. And it was in the laning stage, it just quite work out in the end. Yeah, now we'll see whether obviously you expect teams who play with the IO to know how to play against it, Radiant but team ban. I think it's really interesting because Okay, first of all, we. I was going to say that I think Stark maybe will have a better chance here of knowing how to handle the IO Wisp, but they go with the Chaos Knight, not the Tiny, not the Sven. Both the heroes that we see much more frequently with the IO, they go with the Chaos Knight. I think that's way too early to pick it up. Like, Chaos Knight is one of those heroes that when it slips through a draft into 4th or 5th pick and balls are already revealed and you know you're not playing against anything that counters your hero, Five it works really well me. as kind of the surprise element. But they haven't picked into it at all. Time. There's no blatant strength over Oracle or Void. Okay, you can only disarm one of the illusions or the main hero. Obviously, you can chrono all of them. West can relocate away, blah, blah, blah. Like, there's a few things, but the price he went to it straight away. It's got to be something they're comfortable with. Whether that makes it a good pick or not is questionable. It's... Okay, so the part that cracks me up about this, right, is like... I love seeing the Chaos Knight, but it is something a lot of teams in Dota not a huge fan of things that are randomness in the game. And I think that is a... I mean, it makes sense. It's a skill game. You don't want to get RNG'd. You feel cheesy after it happens. But the Chaos Knight can be a dominant force with the Phantasm now up to the 50% chance. Also the Meld Strike on the Illusions. Not the Meld Strike. I don't know. The Chaos Strike has a the chance crit. to reduce Tama. I don't know what no, no, we call that, Every time you crit, it reduces. Yeah. It's, it's, I call, we call it Meld Strike, I was calling it Meld Strike because it reminds me of that ability, but it's just, I guess it's just part of the Chaos Strike. It's not a great name, guys, I'm just saying. Everything has to have chaos. So, it's just, I like it, it's interesting, the Invoker is going to be banned out though, both of the heroes that we often see paired really well with the Faceless Void, Invoker and Gyro banned out by HWA, and this Witch Doctor ban and the Broodmother, that's... Really interesting, actually, that Stark went for those. Well, the Brood Band makes sense, just because it's an annoying hero to play against, and it forces you to lane in a way that you otherwise wouldn't want to, or you have to deal with it, with blah, blah, blah. It also makes a lot of space around the map, so any team with an IO can slice up. We start to... Radiant it is semi-good against Void, because if you're... In the Chronosphere, obviously, you can place a Death Ward somewhere around it, and it kind of zones you away. And again, it's good synergy with the Chaos Knight in terms of fighting early. 
Uh, the, the only reason I can actually see this Chaos Knight being a good pick is because it's going to rape Void in the lane. That's the only reason I can see them picking it second. You know, logically, outside of Ten team preference. Remaining. I mean, now, yeah, like, I, it might... Jug's it... fairly good against CK as well, because you can never land remaining. stuns on him. As you just mentioned, there could also be a factor here where time. it could be a preferred hero for someone. It might just be the comfort heroes, right? Sometimes, even if something is better, you want to make sure your team has comfort heroes. And speaking of comfort heroes, we're going back to the Beast Monster. This hero dominated in game one. So I wouldn't be surprised if it has a blast again. But we'll see. Oracle's really good against Beast Master, though. Yeah, That's that was... That's one thing to keep in mind. That was actually why I was super surprised last game they didn't end up picking it up oh sorry in the first Ten game it remaining. feels like the beast monster can't do much against the oracle now you have an oracle Five jug against a beast remaining. monster not the easiest of kills but it's certainly something where beast monster will probably be forced Reserve back to the jungle time. if stock play this right it's still a good pick in terms of providing what they need on their team but Radiant team it's hit. much better than Batrider still, because Bat is even worse against Oracle. Beastmaster will still provide you some good vision, better team fight presence, I suppose, in terms of upping up the Chaos Knight. I, I don't know, I think it's probably something they needed, but again, it's not ideal. Okay, so this Magnus, do you... Do you have the Magnus jump in to set up a good chrono? Like, what is the combo, the wombo combo from Stark here? Uh, he presses some power on people, and then you use your ultimates on one or two heroes that you need to kill. He Again, presses in power on people. Thank you. Yeah. No, but like, that, that's the reason they want the hero. And it, last game, when they went for the Void and the Tree on HWA, it was a similar thing. You're dealing against a Wisp. They're probably not going to be set as five heroes, so having one initiation tool that covers a large area, use it on one hero, then the Wisp and Penny come in. You have another one to lock them down as well. Dire team ban. Um. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's easier to initiate with a Magnus, I suppose, because RP is fairly instant after the blink. You can obviously skewer them away, and then you can yeah. either chrono them after they've clumped up, or you can chrono the guys that you didn't RP remaining. that are trying to help the guys that did get RP'd. Five seconds remaining. Kind of just whichever they see is a better jump. There's no... Reserve no rocket science, just it's on Ten whichever feels better. Remaining. There's some issues though I worry about. Who is putting Five damage into the remaining. chronosphere? Because of course both Mag and Juggernaut melee heroes, and unless Faceless Radiant lands these perfect team chronos team. with people on the edges, Juggernaut is going to have a hard time hitting them, let alone positioning in the short duration of the Chronosphere to get to hit them. And Stark DG, they're looking for another support, so you're... I mean, Ten seconds. the Witch Doctor's gone, is what I'm trying to say there. We don't have a lot of other support to do heaps of damage from outside the Chronosphere. The only other thing I'm thinking of is like a CM. Lena's pretty Reserve good. Time. Ten seconds remaining. Uh, yeah. Somewhat greedy, but Oracle provides a setup, so it could be a Five decent support duo. You know. Again, not ideal against Silencer, though. Enigma's even less Radiant ideal against team. Silencer, but maybe Stark okay. just feel like they're very confident after last game, and there isn't much for them to worry about. They can get fairly greedy, I suppose, with their lanes. Or it's... I Gonna get kind of screwed bottom, but he'll be useful. Jug Oracle, very strong lane. Mag will do fine mid regardless of what he's against. Here Actually, I see some kills more... if the Enigma comes in. Here I see more synergy, but the problem is a lot of these alts are on really long Five cooldown. Remaining. So I do think Stark have to be very careful. Yes, the global might be used, but if you end up using all of your alts, even if you kill them, there's a window for HWA to get some push on, if that's what they want, which they can do very easily with Chaos Knight and Beast Monster. Maybe it's just they want to take the next team fight. It, it just yeah, the, there, feels easier. There is going to be a window, but it's the same for both sides, right? Chaos Knight's not ideal when he doesn't have Phantasm. That's a decent chunk of a cooldown. Silence is the same thing. I don't know. Like, I, I like Stark's draft until they went for the Enigma, but I... At the end of the day, the draft is still good. 
mostly going to come down to how much silence is screwsome, I think. And maybe the Beastmaster vision. Like, when you want to be jumping in with heroes like Void, Mag, ending on Enigma if he goes blink and wants remaining. to go for that kind of an route as opposed to, like, the mech and tank off. Bort can really mess with them. Prepare for battle. They don't really have much counterplay if Global comes out and one of their calls gets caught. Like, Shog Jug's fairly hard to kill if he goes for, like, a Manta or something and he can get out of Global, but... Oracle's obviously irrelevant entirely for those four, five, six seconds. Mag's not going to get any items that allow him to be relevant until a BKB, which is fairly far into the game because you normally go blink and force first. Void barely ever goes BKB. I guess he could go Manta, but again, he's not going to be in a position to yeah. farm that quickly. So it will be fairly late. This is so Unless they really wreck the silencer in the lane because he has an escape mechanism, he's probably going to be very impactful this game. I really like the silencer pickup. I do think the silencer should have a good lane here. He, ah, uh, okay. I was about to say I think the silencer needs a ward up here just because it makes it a lot easier to dodge the shockwave. But actually, stalk get one up. So maybe the Magnus has some hope there. But silencer is a lane dominator. We don't get to see him in a core role as much as I would like, but he dominates mid and he should have an easy time. Albeit there was a bit of a change to the arcane curse. It's meh now, but just with the lost word that does so much damage. And it's ensured damage. Yeah, and on top of that glaive, so one of the, the better attack. Uh, not a modifier, yeah. but you, you know what I mean, like the auto yeah. ones. Yeah, you, you don't draw creep aggro when you use it, which is super powerful, because you can have a very dominant position in lane, where maybe you shouldn't have. Exactly. Like he, as soon as the lane meets here, he can literally go on the cliff and Sure, Mag will win the trade with him just due to superior armor and such, but as soon as Mag doesn't feel like he wins the trade, then Klasinki will feel very comfortable just going on the high ground and trading hits. Yep. So we can already see that in action, but interestingly, up top they've decided to run an aggressive duel. <laughs> Not something we see often, and Trixie actually gonna be- they rotate, both sides are on aggro duels. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think Stark read it in the draft that they wanted to do this because they banned out the Rubik as opposed to anything else, and that gives them a lot of setup to do something like this. And Boyd should do fine against this lane. He'll he'll get his experience similar to last game. Probably won't get as much farm as he would like. But very good thing that the Oracle isn't dealing with this, and on top of that, the Jug is going to get a much easier lane. Mike's not a particularly here. Easy hero to roam on either for yeah. either of the supports. Wisp will want to stay top with the Chaos Knight as much as possible, and A just wants to sit bottom and pull. So, I think we might be off to a bit of a slow start again. Although, while Trixie has the time walk, if he takes a little bit too much harass, he might get boosted down by this combo up here. But it's going to take a while. The Chaos Knight needs levels, I think, before that'll happen. Can't harass the uh, Void with. I owe that well either, just because he has PMS already. Yeah, that's a really nice start for Trixie. Of course, if the IO can get some levels and get the spirits out, it'll be a little bit different of a story, but still not a lot of kind of chip damage. Oh, excuse me. I'm gonna cough. Not yeah, a lot of chip the damage. The winner out of all of this as well is the Enigma, who's not gonna have any of his farm contested, none of his camps have been blocked. They have a vision of him farming, but didn't decide to block anything, which is understandable, I suppose, because it's all fairly easy to deal with when you know it's happening and it's a big expense on your end. Especially if Wisp wants to go for the bottle rush, then A has to buy everything, and if you want the AA in an aggro lane, you want him to have like some stats so he's not a completely squishy hero. Yeah, we haven't touched on this much, but Alex the Fool hasn't been able to get much done. He has hit level 2, but... Oh, Faceless Void actually going down on top. He got dived under the tower. And, uh, they managed to secure the kill there, despite the time war. I think if he actually doesn't dodge the stun, it might be fairly easy to follow up with the reality rift. And when there's that much chase room, they'll have the damage. With the Oracle, can you afford to super sack um, 
I mean, just super stack the Oracle support, allow Enigma to get up that early mech that we've seen be so impactful in these games. Yeah, he, he's a really good 5 hero, how defensive he is, but more his levels than his farm that I feel that make the hero really impactful. Right now, he's level 3, he's going to stay on par for a, at least for the next minute or so, depending on how much pressure that gets put in this lane. Yeah, and they really don't have a... Oh, we have a spin. They aren't quite able to bring down RNT. So he gets healed up by those purifying flames and his salve. Feeling groovy. Literally one HP. Yeah. Welcome to Dota. The axes fly out onto Valix. Alex is coming around from the sidelines. He has those cold feet. It'll do a little bit of damage, but can Valix just walk it off? The auto attack is enough to bring him down. And HWA get themselves off to a nice groovy start. Trixie also having a lot of trouble in the top lane again. That is very unfortunate in Stark's mind. But for HWA, that helps them a lot. Anything this Beastmaster can get in terms of like extra farm, extra experience, same for the AA, is just. They make their window that much earlier, so it's going to be that much more effective. Yeah, and we're seeing Trixie getting harassed again. He is out of regen. We've seen this show before. When the Void is out of region, stuff starts to get very scary, and Nemfi very low in mid as well. Has to be careful, but we have an engagement on bottom. The spin coming out, they do lose the Oracle. RNT, can he be found? The Catapult ends up bringing him down despite the boss low, and Whisper will be getting something out of that. Yeah, they'll, they'll try the Oracle for the Beastmaster every day of the week. Hopefully it doesn't happen too often for the Oracle's sake, but the Jug will still be fairly happy with the exchange. Yeah, he got solo experience. He's almost level 6 because of that. He also got most of that kill gold, even though it did end up being an AoE kill, since he was the only one in the area. Or being a creep kill. There is global up now as well, but there's not too many ways to make good use of it until the roar comes out as well. And maybe even AA blast, because they kind of lack a bit of damage right now. Sure, the silence are does quite a lot when someone's actually locked down, but I think he's just going to be sitting mid most of the game getting his farmer. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he like moves around in 5-6 minutes, but until then he should be fairly stagnant. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually uses it to get a kill on this mid lane, because as you said, there's no good way, you're not going to have a 5 on 5 team fight for the next probably 5 minutes. So if your global can secure you even one kill, you go for it. Oh yeah, or you save one of your heroes, that's better. Probably the more likely scenario if um, Boogie does want to smoke up with the Enigma and go for a whole kill. Surprised if he does go for it because that's exactly what I'm thinking that Basinki wants him to do, so... Yeah, he Maybe they can smoke. get the kill regardless, so... He has a smoke flying out though, and I'm pretty sure he's going to smoke right on top of a ward. We are going to be seeing an engagement here. Chronosphere comes out. They immediately tether up Klansinki, and there are the IO balls flying out. So the first Chronosphere from Trixie does very little. Although Boogie, the smoke has been seen, but they didn't see... They know he has one. They did not see a smoke up. And in bottom lane, what is the shenanigans? There is Whisper under the tower taking the chilling touch. That does way more damage than you can stand at this level. That's a mistake, I'm sure. Maybe he just didn't count his mana right for the Omni. It is very difficult being a jug at such a low level, even though he has stats coming out. Oh, an Enigma is picked off since they see him in the jungle. Even though he's been leveling up stats, it is so hard to get the kill. The uh, <laughs> Enigma's babies are trying to find something here. The Shockwave has come out a blind one, and Io actually stops his TP. Okay. No, he didn't stop his TP. He tethered then TP'd to get the repositioning. Trixie gonna take a stun, but there's no chance he could kill this Chaos Knight. Uh, and now it's just... These master has his raw, but... And on top of it, they have AL. But he's just finding a way of using it without making it too obvious, because as soon as he leaves this lane, it's gonna be called. Even if he's smoked or not, it's gonna be a really easy play to either dodge or, you know, bait. AA Blast is obviously like a lot harder to deal with, and they can get a lot of kills on this void just by him throwing it top right now on the creep wave when it's about to hit. CK uses his stuff, which is exactly what they're doing now. Flying up. 
That's exactly what you said was going to happen. There's going to be CK's bolt, and they get the blast. Trixie is dead. He's doing typical Trixie stuff. <laughs> he, he did get a lot of levels top this game, but as I said, his farm is next to nothing, and unfortunately his involvement after the first chrono has been only negative. I mean, there's not an easy way it feels like for Stock to make, make much happen right now. They're having the reverse of what happened in that game to Ancient Apparition because of some kills on bottom hit a, you know, 7 minute AA blast. That's ridiculous. He's going to be very farmed. He actually has the Midas recipe coming out to him. Maybe the whole thing? No, just the Midas recipe. Like, these supports on, Star on w HWA are doing very well. Yeah, the Wisp on top of that has already got his urn, two kills. He's a happy bunny. They're headed up top, they want to use that Chronosphere and the Enigma ult. They're probably just going to find it on one. There go- Oh no, the Chronosphere- the in and Magnus walks into it! The tether is going to end up being not so good for <laughs> the Io. But both sides having a lot of trouble making anything nice happen there. That was fucking clowny, holy shit. <laughs> I was trying to be polite about it, but PQ, dropping, dropping uh, some mean, truth. Yeah, it was, was a lot of things were whisp whiffed. Um, uh, at the end of the day, he was probably going to die there regardless. They used the chrono. They just make it a little more entertaining for us casters and viewers. So the players, you know, helping us out. I'm actually kind of surprised there wasn't like any global there. Maybe the core didn't come out quick enough for the wisp to be able to tether away. I Looks mean, like they want to go for something again, because they're all grouped up right now. Quite front of being on cooldown, they still have tower. hole. It's the classic conundrum that you have when you're running an Enigma, when you're running a Magnus. You really want to use those ults early on, because there aren't big team fights. but of course if you waste it, like, oh, okay, there's going to be the Phantasm, he only gets two. Let's see, the Global Silence, they're trying to do damage here, but it's looking like they might already lose the Oracle, but the Black Hole comes out, Trixie smacking away at them, there will be an A blast on all of them, the RP just hits Necroman, and they'll get that, but two of them end up shattering, and now Nemphi in a lot of danger, he is being slowed up, the A blast will wear off, he doesn't have have the shockwave, but RNT will be forced to retreat. And again, no mana on Whisper for that Omni Slash. And considering how much like their cooldowns cost them to be using at this point, the gain from that fight was so minimal. Fuck. Meanwhile, like Silencer was just farming out, pushing mid. He had no involvement there, the A was obviously bottom, he's already got his Midas and 1,000 gold. Maybe not quite the AA we cast the other day, but he, he has the potential to be. <laughs> yeah, he's not the most formed AA that we've ever seen, but oh, on bottom, Trixie trying to make something happen, but he's just going to get smacked around here, he needs to get off the time walk, unable to. And these overextensions... Yeah, does a lot of damage. Yeah, I mean, also Cold Snap, uh, sorry, Chilling Touch as well. It's it's not easy being a faceless void. I, I, I mean, it's not that hard unless you try and time walk in on this support when the cast night, you know, isn't showing on the map. But again, it's hard to see what we see from their end. And I'm, I don't think you expected to die there. I think you rarely expect to die. Um, I think a lot of the issues you pointed out, it's hard. They don't see what we see. They don't know about the overwhelming vision coming out from HWA. And also, you're desperate to make something happen. We can tell that both sides, with these smokes, with these movements, they really want stuff to go down. Boogie actually breaks the smoke. There's going to be a primal roar. And Whisper, he can't use the Omni Slash. No mana. So many units around. This is going to be some int going into Klineski. The False Promise trying to keep Boogie alive. He's taking a lot of damage, though. Will he actually go down? He goes down to the Beast Master. I'm not sure if Silencer got the int. Either way, they'll get the IO in return. Klineski did not get the int, so that's a saving grace. Although, Whisper, again, taking a lot of damage. He has to spin away. Meaning, again, no Omni Slash RNT taking damage, but oh, Nemphi gonna be stunned up, taking the autos from Alex, and walking right into a silencer who finally gets his first plus two of the game. There's probably gonna be a lot more where that came from, because now you can see HWA in a very comfortable position that 
whenever there isn't like every ult from stock up, they're probably gonna be trying to look for fights through the Hawk Vision and being raw in reality or have to get some initiations off. And they're starting to pull ahead. They have a 5k net worth neat lead. Actually, a surprising amount of this lead being on the AA, because you wouldn't normally see a support up that high, but they're also in a great place to push another tower, get more gold in their pocket, and for Stark, they need a big team fight or two to really bring them back into this game. They can't do that against a silencer. Like, he's not going to be the one in the front unless there's some you know, really big cock up and they think they're going to get a kill and suddenly three heroes TP in and he doesn't press global before that. You know, that, that, there has to be a lot of misplays on his end for combo to be allowed to happen. So I suppose they can actually fight long enough that the global gets down because they have healing ward on the jug. Yeah, they... the, the course aren't that tanky, but if the A ult somehow whiffs, you know, suddenly Chrono gets used. They pop the silence to prevent any damage being put into the Chrono, but then black hole available by the end of it. They've got blank RP as well, so it maybe lasts long enough to Dyer's withstand the global. It's just a really difficult fight, as you mentioned. They do have some sustain. They also have the false promise, which will keep someone alive for a while, but it doesn't feel like there's an easy solution here for Stark. Their ults... If they use them for a big cooldown, it could just mean that the next tower gets pushed for free by HWA, and they're not stopping. They still have that global silence up. They want Stark to fight them. The Ice Blast will be flying down. Doesn't hit on anyone, so they'll get the tower on stock. I like the sentry placement. Fallen. They see the ice bus coming out. That's actually very smart. Not a lot of teams do that, and a lot of time to their downfall. I... It didn't really matter there, it was just for harassment, but if the... There was a fight to be taken after like a free four man AA blast. I don't I think like I've ever idea. seen that sentry. The sentry for the ice blast? I don't think I've ever seen that before. Oh, there's gonna be a smoke up. It's gonna be broken by Whisper and Boogie. Boogie could turn around. The Global Silence comes out already, though, so he can't use his ult. And Whisper gonna be blown up again before the Omni Slash comes off. Stark, they just have no response to this. The Global Silence is down, but without the Juggernaut, trying to take a black hole fight here is very ambitious. I'm not sure they have the damage to kill anyone. Radiant's bottom tower they have the damage attack. to kill maybe one, but. If the other heroes are around when they go for that, they're gonna expend a lot of ults to get maybe one or two kills and they might just bleed out the rest, so it's very hard for them to go for. Especially when the mag was like ready to counter initiate but he got hit by the IO spirits. Kind of very good play from MDL. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Yeah, and this I mean this ancient apparition is huge. Almost has an Aghanim Scepter sub twenty uh, minutes, and there's no stopping this TP out. So, Alex gonna be having a good game here. I'm- I mean, I'm not- It's not over by any means. Stark has really amazing high ground defense, but they are in a bad position right now. Almost worse than the last one, I feel like. Enigma gonna the be scouted out really by the AA ult, the relocate's coming in, and Enigma going down. Like, like, Tiny is as good, if not better, of a high ground siege than Curse Knight is, but Beastmaster is something that wasn't in the last game. He provides, like, so much vision. AA is one of the more annoying supports to play against, especially when he counters pretty much everything Oracle does in, like, in terms of saving you. Might keep you alive long enough, but when the AA blast is... How long is it with Axe exactly? 17. Wait. Yeah, okay, 17 seconds. All, all your spells then basically just keeping someone alive for an extra eight Dyer's seconds. Yeah, it doesn't it's work. Like, like, you just lose. I Honestly, Dyer's the A blast with the Aghanim's upgrade, it's one of the best in my mind, also because it makes the uptime ridiculously high. It's almost 50% uptime with that, because the cooldown is so short. So, a 17 second fight, it means that you have to back off, and then you have a 23 second window to reinitiate. Less or more, depending on travel time of the blast, but it is so difficult. And then you couple that with the global silence. There may just not be a window for Stark to initiate in. It's his A blast actually hits a number of them. Yeah, this it's so hard for them because all all their ults 
and well, all their initiation tools are big alts. Minus Blink Skewer, which is very, very hard to pull off. And something I want to note is, now they've obviously got Necro Buck on the Beastmaster, the CK is also going for a heart. So they're trying to hit this very early window where all their cores peak at a certain point. Oh, not peak, Radiance but they hit have a power like, boost. point of power. Yeah, yeah like, they're a lot stronger than they would be if, say, CK went for an armlet. It would have been like 2-3 minutes ago, but because he's going hard, they're going for a slightly later window, but still barely early, like he's not going for anything greedy. Basically going to be unkillable, and he can tank everything that Stark have to throw at him. And that's exactly what the Silencer wants, because he wants to be as far back as he can. He could maybe even invest in a Dragonlance, I don't know if he feels like he wants to. I was actually a little... Best item on that hero. I think he's going the Atos. Oh, full stealth, I was wrong. I was expecting... That's better, I think. You can't full stealth someone out of the Chronosphere anymore, but you... can you out of the Black Hole? No, you can't out of either, right. but it's... Oh, solo RP on Klaneski, dude, or Klansinki. They also oh. use the black hole. The relocate yeah, is coming in, and now they're going to be in a lot of trouble. The false promise coming out onto Valix. They're also getting the Enigma. Trixie tries to come in. Actually, just Chronosphere's Boogie in there. The buyback from Silencer, though, this might actually be considered a win for them because they forced the buyback on Silencer and only lost the Enigma. Yeah, the buyout was a bit unnecessary, but it's still going to be two minutes, three minutes without either of those alts. CK's going to finish his heart after this tower, most likely. Wisp is close to a small item, so it's going to make him a lot harder to kill and fight as well, depending on what he goes for. They still have Necrofree and Rora, so the tower's probably going to go down. Maybe even another one goes down because of how strong Necrofree is at this stage. If Nephi isn't careful, he too will go down. Necroman, as you talked about, hits like a truck right now. He is very close to that hot. And they can just siege this tower and not care. You've got an Io, you've got a hot on the way. Even if something does go a little bit wrong, Chaos Knight will just back on out of the fight, get healed up, and come back in. Yeah, there's so little that can go wrong at this stage, though. Just because the ults are all on cooldown minus an Omni Slash. Isn't even the biggest spell right now because CK's just that tanky. If he gets it on the Wisp, sure. I wouldn't even be surprised to see if the Wisp went for a Ghost. Or he could just go like Arcane Mech. I don't think anyone else on his team is holding it. The Ags is up on the AA and also he just dropped a gem in the base. So everything is very much set. Chaos Knight, though, in a little bit of trouble. He's going to be skewed backwards. RP again just used for one. And the Omni Slash. They do manage to get that kill. And the that was a relocate attempt from the IO. They now know that he's coming back. So Stark going to be able to get themselves two quick kills. That first one worth over a thousand Love gold. Love said hello. Oh, shit. And now we're going to be seeing a lot of damage going down. And uh, apparently something just... One second. Uh, I need you to talk for a second. Please. Yeah, sure. Well, they're actually finding a lot of kills they shouldn't be able to right now, which is better map movement. And it's a good that they're committing like the RPs without any hesitation for these kills. Radiance top tower is under attack. Like when global's up, it's hard for them to do something. But they're not going to use global in like a millisecond by the time RP comes out, just because of how long it takes to communicate that he's seen the magnets right on top of him. Blah blah blah. So unless there's hawk vision around the heroes, very yeah. easy for them to get those kills when there's better map movement. Sorry about that, Which folks. Um, also, I had I fixed up my settings. Windows 10 uh, allows some programs to ping you, even when you have them muted, so sorry about that. Oh, Primal Roar on the bottom lane. There's going to be immediately the Fool's Promise, and they just want to bail on out on the lineup of Stalk. Yeah, that's ideal as well. It, they can minimize the pickoffs from... Roar when they play like this, and then when their ults are up, they go for the one or two solo kills, and suddenly the game's looking nowhere near as bad as it was. Like the Joker's on top of the net worth now, they've kind of salvaged it out of nowhere. Like a few minutes where HWA haven't done anything with their lead, the Silence are bought out for practically wasting a global. DK still hasn't finished his heart, which he nearly had two, three minutes ago. They've some money now. It. 
They've really stemmed the bleeding. Yeah, it's kind of just superior play, I think, around the map. But the lead that HWA had should have put them in a position to have done a lot. But when I said the tower top should have fallen, it some reason didn't. The Beastmaster didn't go up there to help them out. The Necropop was used. They didn't get an more from it at all. It, they, they have the gem, they're doing the right kind of things, but if you misplays here or there, just give enough for everything for them. Well, not everything, because there is still a lead and their A is still like, very oh, bad. Okay, we're going to have again. an RP just onto one. The Global Silence comes out, but the auto attacks, they do see the Primal Roar come out. The Black Hole, though, Boogie gets it off and they've caught two in it. The Ice Blast is going to come out. Can they kill off anybody here? The Omni Slash, it's not doing any damage. And Chaos Knight has brought down the Enigma, has brought down the Faceless Void. The False Promise helping the Juggernaut out. He's going to get healed back up. But what looked to be maybe a good fight from Stark, they only catch the Beast Monster. They needed to make sure they got the gem there, though. That was, like, the best thing about that pick. Maybe they didn't check his inventory in time. It's a very easy thing to just not look for at this stage of the game. And obviously, when you, you catch a CK and a Wisp in a black hole, you're pretty sure you want to go and kill them when you have all your heroes there. But CK does have a heart, and they didn't manage to kill the Wisp. They had, like, all their focus went on the CK. The Omni Slash went on him. All of the nukes from Oracle, etc. They kind of just block the execution at the end after setting up a fairly good fight. Yeah, and just as we were saying, they were doing a good job of stemming the bleeding. Of course, HWA get themselves a big lead here. Yeah, and now they hopefully get the chance to use it. Klasinki will have a uh, much easier time in the fights now he has his Aegis. Nearly has another item as well, but I wouldn't be surprised if they go tier 2 hunting now. Yeah. Maybe they just wait for the CK ulti actually, because without that they have very little tower damage. Unless they want to just expend the necro books. In this time while they're not pushing, it lets RP come back up, it lets Black Hole start to come up, so maybe it's not there for the first tower, but it might be there for the second. Luke's going to have his S and Y, or close in further towards his Manta. After this ancient stack, he'll actually be very close, depending if he wants to sell something. At the PMS, sells that he has it. What? Trixie has a buckler. Yes? Trixie, on the Faceless Void. Oh, they're uh, gonna go for it? Oh, no, Trixie Prince actually... God. It could be. It's it's not bad here. I'm just surprised with all of the overwhelming... I mean, there's also a lot of magical damage coming out some, and attack. pure damage, so I'm a bit surprised if it's gonna be a Crimson. The yeah, A-Blast comes out to start the fight. They've got a lot of allies on the sidelines. Chaos Knight has already used his ult. Nempy trying to force stuff away. The Chaos Bolt comes out, though, and I think Nempy just going to go down. The False Promise keeping him alive. He's looking for an RP or anything, and so he just skewers away all the illusions, but he is not getting healed up here. That is just a shatter. They spend a lot on him, though. Minus two. Valix going for the TP away. The Primal Roar comes out, and the Relocate over. Trying to catch Boogie. They catch him with the Chaos Bolt. And again, another disastrous fight for Stark. Yep, and now the Q comes out for the push to happen. Top tower managed to get pushed in by the Necro books. They might even look for a kill on the jug here. A blast has come out, but he spins before the damage hits and he's fine. Yeah, maybe he does go Crimson just for the CK illusions. I don't think it's a great item choice, but it, if they want to group up like that, it gives them some kind of help. At dealing with how quickly the CK will kill all their supports. It's, it's also fairly close to like some other item as well now with we came the bank. Only this the kind of the, like the saving grace here is that Whisper does have the Monta up, does have a Battle Fury, so he's pretty dang farmed. He's actually somehow top of the net worth despite where his team is. But I don't see a great way to capitalize on this because they're not able to take these team fights. Yeah, but if you relate it to last game, at least right now he's getting something off the map and 
It gives them an avenue of coming back into the game when oh, they Oh, they just... smoked up onto the high ground. They are going to get the skew backwards, so at least the Io goes down to them. Ableist coming to follow up, but that's really just a after the fact, and it misses. And, and they actually have all their ults right now, so it would be a perfect time to try and take a fight. DK doesn't have his vehicle of moving around. If they do clump up as four, maybe they just dodge it completely. Go for a push like they were trying bottom beforehand. Maybe Tristy can even stop the TPs, depending on how much vision he has. Yeah, this is also I'm a little bit surprised by this, the positioning from HWA. Yeah, they they now TP back to defend. I was a little bit surprised they didn't take it. The Primal Roll comes out onto Whisper. He does have the Monta, but he's about to lose all of his mana, so it doesn't matter. Whisper's going down. That's why Wand is better than having a PMS. But that that was not something you expect. To lose all your mana so you can't man top global. I mean, he was also primal roared for a long duration of that, let's be honest. There was Yeah, it's... but that's why you like you need the stick so you can back up from the Necro book. But honestly, it's something that when you're playing you probably don't take into account and it will happen to you once and you're like, oh shit, this is actually a problem that I need to deal with. As a caster it's very easy to say, but as a player I doubt many people would think that far ahead into these little details. Yeah, it's incredibly difficult dealing with the Necro Creeps around without the Guardian Greaves being right next to you to give you mana. I... And even then, Guardian Greaves gives you, like, nowhere near enough. Yeah, Might not give enough you enough for the to ult. do Manta, but you can't then spin oh, TP away so... from the damage. Speak of damage, Valix gets some smashed into him. I think he was trying to get up some aggressive wards, that's another thing. They need those if they're going to ever attempt to push. Oh, they're trying to go on the IO. The IO has tethered over to RNT, so it doesn't look like they will catch this. The ball was MVP there, cancelling the blinks. Radiance yeah. middle tower is under Spirits do good work. Spirits are actually a lot of damage. A lot of people underestimate them. So, spirits just cancel blinks, kill people. No, 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 the ball, not the spirits. War. Oh, the boar. I thought you said the balls. And I was like, that's, that is what I call oh, the Please, Llama, one thing on your mind. Hey, it's a really good spell. <laughs> anyway, getting back into this one. As you mentioned, at the very least for stock, they do have somebody in the top net worth. And they have great high ground. That's a lot of why HWA is taking so long to push here. Yeah, it's... It is scary, as long as... The jug's doing this much damage. DK can tank it though. It's just the rest of them that might have to worry. That this Wisp has been close to a mech for five, six minutes and he's not quite managed to get the extra gold he needed to get it, which is going to be something they want to wait for. It's such a big heal. They even have Scythe up on the Silencer now, so I'm, again, this is where they are stronger. They just aren't yeah. using their strength right now. It's not like Starker massively pushing in all the lanes so that HWA have to respond. They've done it once or twice. Every time HWA have responded, they've won the fight because of it. I think it's a case of not wanting to throw away the lead. This, there's no lower bracket in this series. So if they lose, oh, Valix. If they lose Valix, who is, oh, the mech, oh, not enough to save him. Boogie gonna be silenced up, unable to do anything because he used his Guardian Griefs to save a teammate. The Ice Blast coming out as well. They finally get the kill onto the Beast Master. Whisper does get out as well. But again, if we take a look, we're gonna be seeing that Clan Sinky sitting at plus 18 int. And that was about Phantasm as well, so now they have the ability to go high ground if they want to. There's still RP and Chrono to worry about, but if you just send the illusions up there, they can... MP goes for the push backwards, there's the Phantasm coming out, MP taking a lot of damage, the Chronosphere saving his life, and Whisper poking away on the sidelines, he has no Omni Slash here, there's gonna be an RP onto Necroman, MP desperately trying to escape, but there is an own charge on him, and an A Blast ready at to follow up, IO does go down, MP still alive, tries to throw out the Shockwave, but they don't have anything to stop it, Time Lock not procking to stop the TP away from Chaos Knight, so at least Stark got something there. Yeah, I'm really surprised, they... Hitting the Chaos Knight after the Chrono, though. They need to make sure they kill the Wisp. That's like a very basic thing for them to be doing in these fights. 
I think the joke just wasn't sure that he could get over there. I think he'd already used his blink to come over, and so he wasn't sure that he could blink to the other side of the chronosphere and smack away at the Io. But... No, in the chronosphere, it's understandable. I think the Io was too far in for him to hit, same like Chaos Knight, but... I think it's happened like once or twice this game, where they've completely ignored the Wisp, and the target they went on has lived, and then the Wisp has lived as well. That time obviously wasn't the case, but... Can we just say, when though... Mech up, it's gonna be even more important that they kill this Wisp. I know Stark lost to Tier 2 Tower there, but all things considered, that was a good team fight for them. I think oh, yeah, they're definitely. actually... Like, it could have been way worse. They're actually playing this really well. They're they're very far behind, guys. They are almost 10,000 net worth behind. 7.5k experience. As you can see, the top 5 net worths, 4 of them, are on the Radiant. Considering how far behind they are, I'm really impressed with the way that they're using their ults. A lot of teams might hold it for the high ground push, but they're being pretty damn liberal with this LP. I feel like the LP is being used almost every time it's on cooldown, even if it's on one person, because Stark, no, they need every little bit they can get. Yeah, now they might start using the Chrono instead because there's uh, Axe up on the Void, but regardless, when you have like three ginormous team fight ults, you generally don't need all three for it to go well. Yeah. So it's easy for them to just be expending one of them off cooldown every time. It's a nice but it's the right thing to be doing. On the downside though, Silencer, just, you know, a little, about 2600 gold, a little under, away from getting up that refresher. Oh, and there's going to be an engagement here. They get the skewer back on the IO. We talked about this. It's going to be a quick kill for them. This will delay things a little bit more. This time there's no Aegis on them yet, so... Might be Stark's window to go take Roche. Oh, like, is... the Beastmaster wants it himself, though, and this is kind of greedy. Yeah. Stark moving in, realize, they've yeah, seen it all. I mean, idea. yeah, they have the Hawk. Seeing all this movement. Oh, they smoke under the Hawk! That it's smells so it. fucking annoying, honestly. The Hawk or...? Okay, they're yeah, yeah, going! Yeah. They RP onto just Necroman, the silence does come out, Boogie immediately pops his Guardian Greaves, Necroman just going down. They also have a BKB new on Nempy, and somehow again, Stark get the pick off, they have the Chronosphere, it hits on RNT, the Silence are already TPing away, and guess who is most likely going down? Actually, the cro the Faceless Void backs up, doesn't want to get Primal Broad, gonna let Whisper take that, but they have the damage here, and that's the gem! And that's Roche on top of that, was that so... Was that the freaking Courier? I thought it was the Hawk. Did the courier just get the gem? Oh Is my goodness. HWA with the plays. I know they just lost a team fight there, but that was impressive. Sorry, you were saying <laughs> before I freaked out about the Hawk sniping the courier. It's less of a deal than you say, Sorry. unfortunately. Like, of course you'd want to have a gem at this stage, but... And as much as we both said they were ahead, like... Now it's really showing that the windows they missed were really big misses because they can't deal with this jug now. It doesn't matter that the mag and the void are two 3k net worth behind their respectives and hell, even though the enigma being behind the AA, it just doesn't matter because the void's such a... not the void, sorry. The jug is such a big problem for them to deal with. He just outputs enough damage at this stage and he's going to scale amazingly due to the mag. Yeah, I... And also the aura from the Void is also very, very nice for him. I don't think it's over by any means for HWA, but as you said, they have to be more careful. They're probably going to wait on this refresher for the Silencer before they take the next engagement. They've still got really amazing vision. We can see the Radiant see everything coming. Add the Hawk to that. They're in a good spot, but with a Chronosphere now on a very short cooldown... Right? 60 seconds on that. One of those every minute. You s consider the other staggered ults. We haven't even needed to see a black hole used in the past few engagements. Yeah, and that's because mostly the Empower. Like, Jug would not be able to single-handedly deal with this Chaos Knight if it wasn't for the Empower. Despite him being 3k net worth ahead. When there's Radiance um, top four illusions, possibly. There's definitely enough damage from TK to just melt the Jug. But because he's like killing all the illusions due to Empower, it's too hard for the CK to actually keep the damage going off. Yeah, now this Despite is the a... Fact he has AC, the... Uh, yeah, the illusions just aren't tanky enough. It's Weird a... to say when he has 3k HP. <laughs> it's actually really funny because normally the Battle Fury... Uh, 
I mean, the Empower plus the Battle Fury is not only a lot of cleave, it's a lot of extra damage that maybe the Juggernaut might not have, as you said, at this point. Helping him scale better, he hits for 300 with Empower, and that's not including that he has a lot of cleave. I don't know the exact numbers, because they stack, but it's like diminishing returns stacking. Uh, I think it's, it diminishes after 100. Yeah, and, uh, oh, he's not so hit 100 like yet, I think. Yeah, he's at 80. No, it's uh, 85. Okay, so it just adds, straight up adds. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how it works, unless it's changed. It is Dota. Could have changed right out from under you, PQ. I, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that how the numbers scale has been the same since Dota 1 for the most of it, in terms of like armor scaling and yeah. such. They actually, as you said, they keep armor pretty dang consistent. For armor, most folks, all you got to care about is you want to stay above 5, I think. Or you want your opponents, you want to get them under 5. It's relatively simple with that. After that, armor becomes really Indian's diminishing Ratoni. Um, Unless you slider and then minus 25 all the way. <laughs> but th there is a smoke on the rat rounds. So this is like, hopefully, Radiant's ideal way for them to take the fight. They they know. It's, oh no! Whisper is gonna blow it all. Of course, he does have the Aegis, so this is somewhat ideal. Trixie completely whiffs his ult, but doesn't matter. There's a big RP coming out, and Boogie he can't use the black hole because the secondary silence comes out, and he's already used his shoes. They've killed off the silencer though, so at least Boogie won't lose it. MLG somehow not dead yet. He has got an Aegis. He has the false promise. He's just gonna smack people around, trying to do as much damage as he can. There's gonna be a nice little reality rift onto the Magnus, but no follow up. They've killed the Beast Monster, and now they're looking for. Alex, they're looking for more on this tanky AA. He's going down. Io as well. Goodbye. That was a four for one. Stalk, are they really back in this? Hey, after that last getting the Aegis, I think they're actually ahead. But the smoke from HWA was really good. It is trying like hit the back points first. And it was probably the best chance of taking the fight, but with how stark like positions around this area and hitting the trees, there's no easy angle for initiation on the important heroes and the mag has like the PKB to take off the first global which then let the RP come out unfortunately Enigma kind of screwed up with Screeve so he's PKB and uh, he didn't know the refresher was up initially so we're gonna be seeing Whisper get another tower he still has that Aegis so he could poke at this the Aegis is still up for 30 seconds I'm not 100% sure they had the exact timer so they are gonna back out after forcing a buyback this is fantastic for Stark. Yeah, they earned their way back into this. It was mostly just for Mag using the RPs as well to get the picks. Which is, they played it right and moved around the map. I still feel like HWAs, they missed their window entirely. Whether it was due to like one or two mistakes where they did get picked due to the RP and then they didn't want to group up because the ult was down, but their the hero that died was more important in their mind. Every mistake they made just really gets amplified in that window where they're stronger. This now is it's... probably just Stark being the more experienced team. There is a big leap suddenly coming out from Stark. I don't think it's over by any means. Obviously, if one team loses a team fight, it's a racks down because both sides have really strong heroes right now for pushing. This Juggernaut's going to melt everything he touches at the same time as the Chaos Knight would do something similar. But obviously, they're on the back foot suddenly, HWA, for the first time in a long time. I think they can't win a fight unless Double Global hits perfectly. Man, that last one was damn near perfect. Well, the RP still got up in between. It's like, you can't do anything about that unless you have vision. So the Hawk has to be in the right position. You have to see the BKB, and then he's going to instantly blink RP after he BKBs. He's not going to BKB if he doesn't RP. Mm -hmm. So you have to already have refreshed, which means you don't get to use your sheath. It's like, it's pretty much an impossible situation Radiant's for him. Tower is under attack. Well, like... I guess they could be using the sheep to get some pickoffs, but Stark aren't really splitting up that much. They're keeping very close in it because they know the only way they lose this game is due to this, you know, mispositioning errors. Again, we're seeing now. I don't want to trash this hero or anything, but it's the second time we've seen a very fond A not having so much luck as the game progresses later and later. Do you think this is? I think most of it's just on play that Stark managed to do a good job of taking advantage of single pickoffs when HWA was strong. But is there also maybe something up with this AA? 
I think the AA is fine, but when he gets this much farm, it's it's it really does diminish after the ag. Uh, getting the hex is amazing. Don't get me wrong, like having a support with a hex would have let that kill happen if he was first, but unfortunately, it's went broke, and they're still going for yeah, it. They get the hex up. Trixie most likely dead here. A boss going to finish him off. So minus two. I think he also used his BKB there at the last second, as did the Magnus. So both right, of them mind. BKBs on cooldown. That is. I forgot Simon said a hex for a minute, and I was kind of all on talking about the A, but obviously Simon said has one as well, so it doesn't really matter. Having the secondary hex helps a lot because at the moment, and probably for most of the game, Stark is highly on jog. Like he is their core. The rest is just four supports. But on How both sides, we have supports. They are is you know questionable, but they don't right click for shit. It's all on the jug to do damage. I think you touched on something really important there, though, right? Both sides, the IO and the Oracle, need to be priority targets, it feels like, because this Oracle is what kept... Albeit the jug had an Aegis there, so it wasn't terribly dire in that last fight, but the Oracle kept the jug alive. He was on, like, 20 health at one point in that fight down in the woods here. Oh, thank you, Dota Drawing Lines. And he was just kept alive. It was quite ridiculous. So I think yeah. if you don't pick off the Oracle, if you don't pick off the IO, both sides have options of still dominating team fights. Oh yeah, for sure. Defensive supports are just so good when they're allowed to do their thing. Why Silence is probably like the hero they went to this game. Obviously there's like the Wombo Combo aspect as well, but when you can stop that hero being useful, it, it just helps you so much. Unfortunately, even though he hasn't got a way of getting rid of the global yet, he hasn't needed to because the rest of his team's been able to live long enough and you know, just do enough without him in that window. Now, we have a refresher out on the Magnus as well. So this is really big. RP isn't the longest duration, but of course with an ag oh, sorry, with a refresher, my brain was like, what's that word you just said? <laughs> with a refresher you can potentially get yourself up to seven seconds almost of lockdown now, albeit that's not going to be... There's a global silence to contend with, there's a lot of different things going on, but with the BKB starting to come out from the heroes on stock, these silences have to be used perfectly, as you talked about. Yep. And on top of that, the Void has his own BKB, so you have to worry about him, you have to worry about the mag, you have to worry about the Enigma who also has EKB as well as Greaves, so... There's no winning if you're silenced to here. You just have to fluke it, honestly. Like, one of them BKBs due to maybe the Beastmaster showing up or someone with a Hex. Then you silence, and... I don't know, like, there's so many scenarios that could happen in fights, it's... You know what else is... The biggest is... problem is, like, the Chaos Knight can't just run into Stark's lineup like the Jug can run into HWA. Because he has his butterfly, he has so many ways of just not giving a shit, but running into them. Whereas Chaos Knight can't. Like, if he's already popped his ult, Stark can, you know, kite it, they can just CC it straight off. Not that scary anymore. He's not the be-all, end-all late-game carry. Jug is... 100 times better, and he has the net worth lead. Yeah, your crit on Jug is just a little bit better, and as you said, having illusions is nice, but Juggernaut just scales better. Another thing to point out is that this Chaos Knight's been forced into some arguably unconventional items. He's trying to get an MKB up to deal with that with, uh, the butterfly on the Juggernaut, but whether it works... It's the right item choice for sure, but as you say, has you don't want to be forced into not. it as well. Uh, we will be seeing... Is this Julia? I think only one of them smoked. Yeah, they're not smoked on stock. So we're just going to be seeing posturing. Okay, we have a Chronosphere just onto RNT. The IO is ready. Relocates just off to the side. So Chronosphere was used, but now Stark have an idea that everybody's there. That's no big deal though, because it's just a 60 second cooldown. Yeah. No, agreed, Even I think this is... Like, it's slightly longer, but if they take the fight now, there's one less ult for them to worry about. 
which is ideal on their end, but they're, they're walking through vision. Oh gosh, there's gonna be an RP. It only hits on the IO immediately. That global silence has been removed. The refresher comes up, but there it is. The second silence. A blast hits on a lot of them. They're taking out the IO. They've gotten one. The Omni Slasher and the ult from Enigma ripping right on through them. Three dead all of a sudden. Alex the Fool, can they get the time bash? No. No time lock there, and at the same time, they are chasing down the silencer. Juggernaut looking for it. Goodbye, Clan Sinky. He is going down, and that may just be the GG. They are a lot of buybacks coming up from the side of HWA, but they're ultless. I think it's fairly useless to work as ult on a buyback. Oh, Trixie is uh, catching those effigies. Yeah, he, he's a sad void right now, but I, I'm pretty sure they're happy that they just won this game after getting fairly dumpstered in the early game, which is pretty sure HWA just choked, that, and that's exactly what, okay, game's not actually over yet because the buybacks come out and there was a tier 2 top. As soon as these ults come up again, they, they can probably just go straight for Roche now. Even it's without a... ults across the board, Stark will win the fight. With ults, they still win the fight, so... It's as you said, it's really difficult to put the experience into words. Obviously, Stark, just more experience. HWA, I think they were afraid of pushing up into that high ground. And it come back to bite them. The Ice Blast yeah. will land, but it's gonna just tickle them at this point. Yep, she's as well, which hopefully one of them picks up. Looks like Boogie is hungriest. Yeah, so... I mean, I don't... Again, I still think if HWA are able to take a team fight here, they could get themselves back into a good position, but it's almost a 20,000 net worth lead for the folks on stock. What yeah, a they comeback. They just can't take a fight, though. It, it's so... possible for them. Even with the vision from Walk, it's just like this drug is unkillable. Yeah, with no smokes on cooldown, it doesn't look like there's much that they can do. And now Stark, they're itemizing around a lot of what HWA has. Lotus orbs coming out. Those dispel the silence as well, folks. So now they can make sure that two people, even if BKBs are used wrong, are unsilenced. And they'll get the kill on the IO when he returns. Yep, and that is a hero without buyback. And they're already in the lane. The has the tier 2 up, so fortunately, fight the friendly, hello, he is dead, tier 2 will probably be dead even quicker than he was, I don't see the Rex surviving <laughs> either, they, they, it seems a wave hits the base, but Jug probably is comfortable going with it to hit the tower, they don't really have the best form of lockdown for him, because you can just... Oh off, no. Off they caught out the AA in a Chronosphere. Trixie deciding to show no more mercy to the effigies. And even though he doesn't do much damage with the Empower, Trixie is dotting to hit. Yeah, and that's the joy of the mag. Even your heroes that hit for 100 suddenly. Oh. They, they Primal Roar comes out. There's going to be one RP, the Refresher, and the BKB is out. Although Necroman, he isn't going to be able to blink for a while. There's going to be a lot of a mess here. Beast Monster already dead. Necroman is trying to get something done, but he is burnt down and there's no buyback. That is GG. There's no defense that can be leveled here by HWA, and they call it. Yeah, that was without Black Hole, without he second RP. The, the joke's just too big at this point. So basically all this came down to was them being in a point of power and not using it. Yeah, I... Because there was a lot of inevitability this game when you find yourself running against A, a harder carry, and three ginormous teamfight alts, which are going to dictate how the game goes after 40 minutes. You can't let it get there. And they had the lineup to end it early, and they kind of itemized to end it early as well, but they just choked. Made a few pushing out lanes when they shouldn't have. Certain heroes dying, not letting them get the towers they want. Send out five heroes. Giving away the ages was pretty much the big turning point, even though there were a few mistakes before that. I completely agree. It just felt like HWA had trouble 
playing at their peak power, but also Stark got excellent pickoffs. They used the RP for solo pickups every time it was on cooldown and delayed that push coming out from HWA who wanted to wait for their whole team. So really well played from Stark. They're going to continue up in advance, but that's not it for the day yet. Up next, we've got Prius versus PR, which I'm pretty excited for. Again, another pair of well-matched teams, and that'll be starting in about 10 minutes, so we got to head on over to that lobby. There'll be a bit of a break in between, folks. Hope you have fun during the wait. We'll put some music on. Once again, I'm Llama Down Under. I've been joined by PQMZ. He doesn't have any social media, but I do. So feel free to hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, and Twitch with feedback, and we'll see you shortly. Bye, guys.